Hello, Riverdale community. I would like to share with you some developments from this extremely dynamic week and highlight some of our plans for return to in-person learning. I'd like to acknowledge some unknowns. On Tuesday, we'll learn more from the Oregon Department of Education. We'll learn about the metrics. T today, we learned about um, some concerns and cautions about the reserve and the, the availability to the COVID-19 vac vaccination. That will certainly continue to evolve and develop. And I acknowledge that because there certainly was some, you know, let down today around that in light of all of the enthusiasm and hope earlier this week. We're getting there. We're close and we are planning to open our doors. So I'd like to share with you that back in November, we prepared uh, an assessment center, K-12, so that we can do on-site assessments for things such as um, special education. We were asked not to bring any new groups together by our public uh, health authority, Multnomah County Public Health Authority, and now we have received the green light. We are ready to go for our assessment center, so that will begin in the near, near future. Um, we are on track to make a recommendation to our school board to begin limited in-person learning on February 8th. We have a very robust K-4 hybrid plan uh, that I look forward to bringing on the road and getting feedback from you on um, this next week. So we had a stand-up staff meeting today, shared a bit about that, and really what the plan does is it allows for in-person learning on-site daily um, for our little guys. And we are asked uh, in the guidance to prioritize our youngest learners, and so our plan does start by prioritizing K-4. through doesn't mean the other planning isn't happening, but the, that we do need to prioritize those younger students first. So look for more information on that. I'll be meeting with our instruction planning um, group on Wednesday. And like I said, meeting with staff, our leadership group is um, helping tremendously. Our principals, I want to thank them for the countless hours we've spent together. And also want to thank Jill Vote, our education consultant, who's been helping every step of the way. We also are on track to begin athletic conditioning February 8th. I'd like to share a little bit about the safety preparations in our buildings, starting with air quality. We have at the grade school a system that has a pre and a post filter. The filter is a MERV uh, 13 air filter that is hospital grade. We also have this at the high school. Um, the system at the grade school brings in about 60 to 70% fresh air, depending on the season. We also have the ability to open the windows. Additionally, we're bringing in air purifier units in all instructional spaces in both schools. We're bringing in a higher volume of those at the high school because of the nature of the older system and windows not being able to open. We also are bringing in ionizer for ionizers for larger spaces that move the air around more before it's then purified. Uh, we uh, are doing a lot in that area and uh, feel good about the air quality when we do return to in-person learning. Also, classrooms have been set up for quite a while at the grade school back to this summer with a six feet apart, 35 square feet in each room uh, per person. Uh, we also have plexiglass installed in high traffic areas and we're ordering more to have on hand uh, for additional use as needed. Uh, we ha have PPE coordinators that we're tasking with keeping track of inventory in both schools. Uh, we have plenty right now, but we know that uh, that might go fast and we want to stay on top of that so, so that we're ready to, to reorder as needed. Um, as mentioned, we're taking this out for feedback this next week in advance of that board meeting on the 25th. I want to share a great appreciation for all of our stakeholder groups, for our teachers, our staff, our foundation. The plan that we're putting forward right now um, does require that support, that additional support in Riverdale that makes us unique and wonderful. And the plan that we're able to put forward as thanks to our community is stronger and provides more instructional, provides more instructional minutes on site um, as, uh, as that requires resources and we're currently in strong financial health. So I wanna, I wanna acknowledge that. We'll talk more about the budget um, also at the January meeting, but I do wanna thank um, everyone that contributes to what makes Riverdale go round. Uh, with that, it's Board Appreciation Month. So please join me in thanking our school board and all of their hard work. Between now and then, we're going to be um, gathering that data. Thank you for doing this surveys, gathering that, that relevant data for what we're up to now um, and preparing for our in-person learning now, um, being watchful and mindful of the safety and the health landscape as well. 
So with that, I want to thank you all. I want to wish you a wonderful, long three-day weekend in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Have a great weekend.